Hey, 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 Jake Cake here, and I want to thank you for sharing part of your day with me. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it has been four weeks since I posted a fantasy football video. It's been crazy. It's been hectic. We have gotten new equipment, as you could have heard from my SGC card reveal video. But we have new equipment, so hopefully the videos will be better. Uh, the quality will be looking to be improved upon from previous videos. So uh, thank you for your patience leading up to this. Um, we are just going to go team by team and week by week. Uh, so I will talk about one team for all four weeks. Like always, I will talk about whether we won or lost, the current record, as well as who did well for me, who did not do well for me, and ads and drops. Vince McMahon Football Club, we'll go ahead and start with him. In week four, I won 197 to 151, bringing my overall record to two and two. My highest scores included A.J. Brown with 29, Jalen Hurts with 27, and the Cowboys defense with 50. Woo! Now, thankfully, the Cowboys defense played well for me because 2-2 Atwell only scored three points for me. The ads and drops for this week were very short. I added the Houston Texans defense and dropped Kenneth Gainwell. Moving to week five, I won again, 131 to 83, bringing my record to three and two. Travis Etienne led my team in scoring with 32 points, followed very closely behind by Jalen Hurts, who scored 30. Some of the disappointments include Brian Robinson only scoring four, the Houston Texans defense only scoring two, and Jamison Williams scoring a goose egg, zero. It was also his first week back, so gotta give him a little credit. He was on a pitch count. There were no ads and drops for this week in week five, so we will jump to week six, where I won again 130 to 115. Jalen Hurts and Travis Etienne both scored 20 points, while Calvin Ridley got me a whopping three. I got very lucky this week because the opponent had Tyreek Hill, but then also had Christian McCaffrey, Debo Samuel, Gabe Davis, and George Kittle. So again, I got lucky or my opponent got very unlucky. Another week with no ads and drops, so we will jump into week seven where I extended my winning streak 130 to 95, bringing my overall record to five and two. The leading scorer on my team was Jalen Hurts with 27, followed very closely by AJ Brown with 21. The duds included Keenan Allen, who only scored five, and Calvin Ridley, who had 0.5. Thank you. Thank you so much to Jalen Hurts and A.J. Brown for showing up. And no thank you to Calvin Ridley for not showing up. Actually, I'm going to need him, so please continue to show up. Similar to Calvin Ridley scoring no points for me this week, there were also no ads and drops. That makes three weeks in a row where the Vince McMahon Football Club did not add or drop a player. Sticking with the ESPN leagues, we're going to move over to the Majestic Juggernauts, where week four brought a victory to me 81-68, to bringing my overall record to 3-1. and Jalen Hurts led my team with 32 points, while the Dallas Cowboys defense registered 26 points. On the other side, Jerome Ford only got me three points, Dallas Goddard only got me two points, and Jordan Addison got me a goose egg. The ads and drops for this week were pretty plentiful. I added Hunter Henry, Jamison Williams, the Lions defense, and Brandon Aubrey. I dropped Gerald Everett, Jamal Williams, Joshua Kelly, and Jason Myers. Heading into week five, I made one critical mistake that lost me the game 90-64, bringing my record to 3-2. and two. Jalen Hurts led my team with 29 points. However, between Hunter Henry, Latavius Murray, and Romeo Dobbs, I got zero points. On my bench, I had Dallas Goddard, who had 17 points. Had I started Goddard over Hunter Henry, I would have won. The as and drop list was pretty short. I added Latavius Murray and dropped Tyler Algier. Week six allowed me to get back on the high horse, winning 91 to 54. Jalen Hurts led my team again with 21 points, and Dallas Goddard only got me four, opposed to last week when he got me 17. Speaking of points, Brandon Cooks and Jamison Williams were both on my bench. They also both scored at least 10 points. Now, I still came out with a win, so no harm, no foul. However, it would have been nice to pad those stats a little bit and make sure I had the most points on my team. 
With no ads and drops for week six, let's jump right into week seven where I came up with another win, 116 to 96, bringing my record to five and two. Jalen Hurts led my team with 27 points, followed by Jordan Addison's 24 points and Jameer Gibbs' 17 points. Speaking of the Lions and scoring, their defense got me negative seven points. The ads this week were driven primarily through injuries and our bye weeks, including Jordan Mason, Jonu Smith, and Brandon Aubrey. The drops included Latavius Murray, Hunter Henry, and Jason Myers. Let's move platforms to Yahoo and talk about the deranged Easter Bunny, where week four I was met with a huge loss, 207 to 104, bringing my record to 1 and 3. Derrick Henry was my leading scorer with 29 points. However, Joe Burrow only mustered 24 points. Pat Fryermuth only scored three, and he got hurt. And Jordan Addison got me a goose egg. You're not going to win many games with that. The ads included Kai Fairbairn, Zach Ertz, the Jets defense, and Jamison Williams, while the drops included Joshua Kelly, Tampa Bay's defense, Jason Myers, and Pat Fryermuth. I was able to turn it around in week five and get back in the win column, winning 252 to 174, bringing my record to two and three. Joe Burrow led my team with 84 points, followed by Tyree Kills 48 and Brees Hall's 34. Derrick Henry got me nine points and Micah Parsons got me zero. On my bench, I had Zach Moss, who scored 40, and Sam Howell, who also put up the same number as Joe Burrow, 84. Speaking of Sam Howell, he was my only ad this week, and my drop was Josh Reynolds. I was able to even my record up at 3-3 three and three with a victory in Week 6, 177-130. Tyreek Hill and Joe Burrow led my team with 44 points each, while Zach Ertz brought up the rear with 4 points. The ads and drops for this week were pretty controversial, as I did indeed drop Micah Parsons, but I picked up Max Crosby. I thought Max Crosby was going to have a great game against the Mac Jones-led Patriots. He got half a sack. Not the worst thing in the world. Micah Parsons did end up getting a full sack. Week 7, I was able to extend the winning streak to... Three games with a 150 to 126 victory, bringing my record to four and three. Jordan Addison led my team in scoring with 38, followed by Sam House 32 and Tyreek Hills 26. On the other side of the ball, Aaron Jones only scored eight points, while Brett Maher only scored five. He missed three field goals and was eventually cut this week. Wow, talk about a bad week. Speaking of cuts, I had to make room for the ads and drops, which were dominated by defenses. I added the Seattle Seahawks defense and dropped the Raiders and the Jets defenses. We're going to move to the Party Time Party Boys, where I won in week 4, 141-108, to bringing my record to 3-1. and one. The leading scorers for my team were Davon A. Chan with 27 and Mark Andrews with 21. The ad this week was Zach Ertz and the drop was Josh Reynolds. Moving to week 5, I did lose 155-120, to bringing my record to 3-2. and two. Davon A. Chan led my team with 21 points again, while Jamal Williams got me 2 points and Matt Breida got me 3 points. The ad this week was strictly injury-driven because Jameer Gibbs was not able to play for the Lions, so I did have to pick up Breida and drop Hunter Henry. Week 6 was much kinder to me with the victory 131 to 116, bringing my record to 4 and 2. The leading scorers for my team included Patrick Mahomes with 23 points, a great game by Drake London with 21 points, and Kenneth Walker Jr. with 17 points. On the other hand, Mike Evans only scored me 8 points. The ads and drops for this week were pretty much a wash because I added Rashawn Johnson and then dropped Rashawn Johnson. I also added Deontay Foreman and dropped Matt Burita. Week 7, I was on a scoring tear with a 185 to 124 victory, bringing my record to 5 and 2. My leading scorers included Patrick Mahomes with 39 points, Jameer Gibbs with 27 points, Mark Andrews with 22 points, and Mike Evans with 20 points. The only low score on my team was the Buffalo Bills defense with 2 points. While my scoring looks great, my ads and drops did not look as great this week as I added Jordan Mason who had double digit special team snaps and dropped Deontay Foreman who had a great game for the Bears. There was a trade that was accepted in this league. It's not a dynasty league keep in mind but one of the players who was in close to last place I think seventh or eighth out of ten traded away Jamar Chase and received Tank Dell and Amari Cooper. I don't think it's a fair trade. Um, it's very frustrating because I did veto it but you need to have more than 50%. The person who received Jamar Chase already had Chris Olave, who, who knows what's going on with that, but also Tyreek Hill, Lamar Jackson, and Zay Flowers. I'm all for making your team better, but to me, that's a lopsided trade. Uh, in any case, we'll see how it goes, and hopefully we can recover and obviously beat them in whatever 
week or round we face them in. Well, that does it for the recaps. Now I'm going to talk about people you might want to add. Uh, they might be on your waiver wire. They might not be, depending on you know how deep your league is and, and what your needs may be. So I'm going to go down a list of tight ends because I view tight ends as catchers. Obviously, they, they catch the ball, but I mean in baseball. If you don't have one of the top ones, you can stream. If you have one of the top ones, you don't need to look anywhere else. So, first one, John U. Smith. He's drawing more looks from Desmond Ritter than Kyle Pitts is. I think it should be the opposite way, but John U. Smith is the go-to guy right now, and Drake London will be able to continue to draw attention and draw some of the coverage to allow both Pitts and John U. Smith to be open. Taysom Hill is another guy I think you should add. Not only does he have the ability to run trick plays, he can also run the ball on a reverse or something like that, which potentially could be a trick play. But also, he can catch. Logan Thomas might be an option. Staying in Washington, Curtis Samuel is someone who might be receiving more looks. Um, I will go ahead and say Sam Howell is an option, especially for a bye week. Now, you might be looking at my sweatshirt like, oh, dude, you're a boomer, you're a homer, you, you only like them because it's your favorite team. Well, yeah, I do, but I'm not going to pick up a lot of Redskins because, let's be real, man, they're not a good team. They just lost to the Giants. Um, a kicker you might want to look at, Dustin Hopkins. He also used to play for the Redskins. However, this week, having Nick Chubb out, having Jerome Ford out, having your quarterback out. I don't know if they'll be able to punch it in from the red zone or even get to the red zone, so he might be kicking long field goals again, so might be someone to look at. Also, finally, Texans defense, they're going against a Panthers offense who has a young quarterback with an aging wide receiver and a banged up running back. Chuba Hubbard might be okay uh, to come in and spell him, but I don't think it's a great offense, so the Texans defense might be a good look for him. Well, that does it for the recaps and the people I think you should add. This week, we talked about weeks four, five, six, and seven. Hopefully, next week, I'll be able to talk to you strictly about week eight and so on and so forth. Um, so again, thank you for your patience. Look forward to talking to you more. This is Jay Cake, and I want to thank you for sharing part of your day with me. 